Welcome to the Captain's Table, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Berserker, one Batman Shelley, your humble host and space bartender here at the Astro Pub and your uh, facilitator for the Captain's Table. Uh, it's Invictus, and uh, this is going to sound weird, but this was not planned for Invictus. This was just when people were available, and it turned out to be Invictus. So um, we have two brand new faces. Well, one older face who has not been here in a long time, and the other one who's... Ah, 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 I'm sorry, Anna, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jake! Are you calling Jake old? Is that what you're saying? That's yeah, what I'm I an old man. I, was, I got defensive for him. <laughs> yeah. um, Four score and in captain's tables ago. And and uh, oh. another face you've seen plenty of times here in the in the uh, Star Citizen verse is uh, and probably even heard her voice several times, um, telling you about various things to pick up and drop off um, constantly in your voice in your ear. Uh, so, with that, let's get to introductions. Let's start with you. Anna, who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen, and where can they find you? Who am I? Uh, Deep philosophical human question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm an actor, voice actor, and now content creator. Um, but, yeah, started off as an actor uh, only. Um, in Star Citizen, I'm the voice of the... I'm the voice of New Babbage, basically. All of the voices along on the Tannoys, the trains, and also the hologram at New Babbage. The voice of Special Agent in Charge, Rowena Dooley, weapons free y'all uh, during the Xeno threat missions. And also you can hear me in Orison Hospital in Star Citizen um, and also in the new Nine Tails event, which is the most recent stuff I worked on for them. It was an eight, eight hour voice job for the new Nine Tails event. So I'm really looking forward to, for, to hearing that as well. But that's where you can find me in Star Citizen. And what was the third question? Just where can they find you? We're just in like, uh, what's your stream? Do you stream? Do you do YouTube? Do you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I started streaming as a result of Star Citizen um, uh, for the last year. So you, you can find me on Twitch forward slash my name, my, just just my full name. Very boring, but I, I think being a voice actor, I always wanted to keep it my name. So if anyone wanted to find me, it's just Anna Dimitrio. Um, I do YouTube a little bit, but it's a very small baby channel. I just upload things more to kind of store store past memories and moments and some funny stuff. So I do, I'm growing it as small as slowly, but I haven't got a lot of time. But that's probably where you can find me best, really, yeah. Awesome. Did you just, just early question just for this one? Did you plan on doing content creation, or was this just something that happened because of say like the pandemic and you just were looking for things to do? Or do you not happen? know the full? Do you not know the story at all? I have never heard the story. So oh, well, maybe, that's maybe good it's then, a good in a way one. that you get yeah. to hear it first let's, time let's, today. If it's if it's a longer one, let's wait for that one. Let's wait for we'll, we'll answer that one. I yeah, let's wait for it. Let's like, wait. Okay. Jake, <laughs> who are you? What do you do in Star Citizen? Where can they find you? Hello, uh, I'm Jake. Uh, I'm a community manager for Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Um, uh, yeah, I work at CIG. Um, I'm here in the Austin office with all of my wonderful community cohorts in crime. Um, and you can find me other than robertspaceindustries.com. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Jake Acapella spelled thusly above yeah. um and for again as 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 many of you know jake has been many times here on the captain's table over the last five years which is really hard to believe it's been five years since this started <laughs> um gosh yeah wow. yeah i the, the joke about us being old is is that we're not actually that old but you know when when we started we were we were but but children uh, lost in the woods and now we're it's old very men true. in space um <laughs> All right, well, let's get started with um, the first question, which is how did you, uh, like, very beginning, before Star Citizen, before you were Star Citizen, what were you doing, you know, professionally and in terms of gaming before uh, before even knowing about Star Citizen? Jake, since it was the last time I talked to you, what were you, what sure. were you doing, like, pre-Star Citizen, before you even discovered Star Citizen? What, was you, what were you working as and, uh, like, what kind of, Game Man. <laughs> um, so I want to say uh, my my career professionally has been storied. Um, I've done everything from run a GameStop to uh, bartending to car sales to data entry, uh, enterprise software sales. Uh, I worked at Starbucks for a little bit. Uh, you name it, I've done it. Um, uh, but uh, a, a couple of those things kind of helped uh, get me in uh, at 
CIG, and I'll kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, but bef before all that, like, um, and it, it's kind of crazy because uh, I always tell this story because before Star Citizen, I had never really been part of uh, a gaming community, really. Like, I had I had a World of Warcraft guild, and that was probably the most like into a video game I had ever been. Um, but, uh, and I, and I remember hearing about the, like, I, I saw the whole Kickstarter for star citizen happen in 2012. And at the time I wasn't super into like crowdfunded anything. Cause it was very new. Like it, it had just like appeared on the scene. Um, so I kind of put it in the back of my mind and I thought it looked cool. And then, um, fate struck, where uh, I was just browsing YouTube and I saw a video uh, called Imagine Star Citizen. Um, so shout outs to Years 100. Uh, your video set me on this insane journey. Um, and I fell in love immediately. Uh, it was, I mean, like everybody can probably attest, like it was like the sci-fi nerd's dream, like uh, living in, a, a, a breathing universe and kind of being able to do whatever you want. That, that just sounded amazing to me. Um, and I had only, um, and I hadn't really heard of Chris Roberts too, too much back then. Um, I had only played freelancer um, uh, and I knew wing commander existed, but I, I hadn't really engaged with it. Um, but yeah, uh, I saw that video and three days later on Christmas Eve, 2014, I bought a Mustang beta uh, and yeah, the bang staying um, back when it had like a couch and stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who were, weren't around, it had this this fantastic, like uh, luxurious looking like chill couch, which had just enough yeah. space for like two people and a little a little yeah. screen. I was like, this is just a make out couch. That's what this is. A little is, kitchenette in there. Little, a little kitchenette, cool. a make out couch and a bed. And that was all it was. And it was just like, this yeah. is like a, a combination um uh, shag and wagon and, and like Mustang. <laughs> so we, I ended up calling it, nicknaming it the bang Stang, and it stuck for some yep. people. So, you know, um, but yeah, I still have, I still have that Mustang. It's still on my account. Um, Aww. and, uh, no, I'll never get rid of that thing. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm very sentimental with that ship. Um, and then, so, uh, so that was December and, mm -hmm. in, and then I like, started to just like peel back the onion. Right. Uh, and being like, Oh, they're like, when people were talking about how transparent it was, I had no idea. <laughs> and, um, and I had like, I was super into video games. It, video games has always been, um, uh, my primary or secondary hobby, depending on which era of music I was in. Um, but, uh, it, uh, I had never really gotten into like the development of games. Um, I was just more interested in like how cool they were. And then I watched every single piece of content within about a month and a half that CIG had put out at the time. Uh, like all the wingman's hangers, I think around the verse had just started uh, um, 10 for the chairman's everything. I watched it all. And then uh at the same time, I found the subreddit. I had recently got into Reddit as well. So I was like commenting like crazy back then. And then uh, I came across this uh, group of people who were doing uh, the Lord's work and transcribing and summarizing as much content as they possibly could because holy moly, it was a lot of content. And I, those fine folks were at the Imperial News Network. I remember those um, The um, yep, Those of you uh, who don't know... Four of them, gosh, no, they, all four of them had been doing Star Citizen content in the Star Citizen subreddit for a year plus. And so like, yeah. if you got news, it was either from Jake, Dolvac, David, or um, uh, Nakara. Nakara. The, like like yeah. they were the first first news, one of their names would pop up. It was you know, Commander Cruz and yep. Tom, Nakara, um, Aral, uh, Aris, and um, um, uh, Nakara. Nakara, yeah, keep reading in the <laughs> Um But yeah, so so I I kind of bullied my way into into talking to them. <laughs> so I I basically like was commenting on all their 
all their stuff, asking questions. And then um, I had heard um, it, this was like February, I want to say um, of 2015. Um, I was going to PAX East and uh, so was CIG at the time. And uh, I literally just sent a message to Nakara on Reddit and was like, uh, hey, do you have anybody going to PAX to cover this thing? Um, because it wasn't being live streamed. Um, they were going to release some of it later, but it wasn't being live streamed. Um, at least I don't think it was. But anyway. Um, and they were like, no. So I'm like, oh, I'll do it. And uh, so I joined that team with no experience, like reporting or interviewing or anything. And uh, I went to the event. I live blogged the whole thing. This and here, this is going to date me. This was the uh, reveal of the Aegis Retaliator. This was um, talking about Star Marine for the first time. Um, I think I think that's when they unveiled the name Star Marine because it was before it was called the FPS module. Before that, yes, yeah. Um, and I played Seda Ball, which was uh, which was very fun. <laughs> but uh very buggy yeah um it was it was a crazy time um and uh i got to i i reached out as somehow to a, a bunch of people i was able to interview um a couple producers i interviewed a producer from ilphonic at the time who was working on the fps module um and uh i got to meet chris roberts um and this this was and it was crazy it was so crazy to me because this was within three months of me like even knowing about Star Citizen. And I was just in it immediately. And um and I had I had never really felt electricity like that in a room for a video game. But when they showed off the retaliator the first time, everybody lost their minds. And it was it was so cool. Um but yeah, and then I joined uh, INN. Uh, we had a podcast for a very, very long time about Star Citizen. We made some uh, like uh, kind of in-universe fictional content, which was pretty cool. Um, we did a bunch of live shows where I would um, interview, like I interviewed Jared, I interviewed Ben Lesnick. Um, we had a couple other devs on at some point as well. Um, and... Uh, we rebranded to Relay, and those boys are going uh, still right now. Uh, Relay.sc, um, and then yeah, we we did that for years and years and years. Uh, we covered like Citizen Cons. We would go to all those shows, and then uh, and then yeah, at, at one point uh, in um, in twenty, you know what? I'm going to tell this story. Okay. And, and uh let's let's see if my boss likes that i tell this story in 2016 um i saw an opening for a community manager position um and i had a rapport with jared at the time and this was basically like jared was drowning and he needed another pair of hands because jared was a community manager at the time um and so i applied and i got through the entire interview process, it was going extremely well. Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, I got an automated rejection letter that I was not going to be an employee at, at Cloud Imperium Games. Um, the, the reason for this is they decided to promote from within. Mm -hmm. uh, some, uh, some guy that was in QA uh, who was very engaged with the community and doing really great work uh, engaging and in, uh, interacting with the community, they decided to to give him a shot, and that man's name is Captain Zylo, uh, <laughs> current head community manager of CIG. Yeah, so yes, he is now the director of community, and then four years later, uh, I decided to try again because they had like an even lower entry level job, and they kind of pitched it as like a like a data analysis job. And I had some experience in that. I, I mentioned that in the first part. Um, and, uh, but it was on the community team. Like it was specifically for the community team. 
Um, and so I reached out uh, and uh, Zylo interviewed me. And now I'm here. You've been, how long have you been working with CIG now? About a year? Uh, I started November 2020. So it'll be two years Jeez. very soon, actually. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, by the way, that data analysis position that nobody knew anything about, that was to run the Star Citizen public roadmap, yeah. um, which is still uh, part of my job. <laughs> but yeah. now uh, that's but one of many hats I wear. Awesome. Good, good yeah. to, to get that backstory. So, Anna, same question for you. Yeah. What were you doing before, um, before working working at CIG or even like streaming Star Citizen stuff? What 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 was the road that got you to in, in gaming or and in um, uh, kind of your professional career that got you to to working with Star Citizen? Uh, well, by trade, I am an actor and still am um, as a my kind of primary career path um i trained as an actor in london for three years at drama school um traditional way left traditionally got an agent and uh was just working as an actor in london living the dream <laughs> um i was super lucky um i kind of left drama school i went straight into um the lead in a feature film that was on netflix for four years um it wasn't the best film in the world but it was like an amazing thing to have as my first acting job um went straight from that into a movie for uh wwe you know they do they kind of like uh <laughs> kind of super american america uh, like action movies i was mm -hmm. in the marine six close quarters um and then after that voice jobs started coming through as part of my auditions really and i was absolutely gobsmacked because they had never been coming through to like quote unquote regular actors before normally voice actors mm -hmm. and actors felt quite separate to me I didn't realize that they would I never thought that video games which were already my number one like kind of side passion in terms of just like having fun people like love gigs or movies or tv or whatever games have always been since I was about 13 um my favorite thing in the whole world and the thing that makes me the happiest I think uh just in terms of like my passion just for me um and then when game auditions started coming into my actual job job it was just like it felt just so incredibly surreal and I don't think my agent at the time because I think gaming has come leaps and bounds for actors especially especially the last maybe even three years four years I don't think my agent even really took it as seriously as anything else she was like you know there's an audition for this game but you don't have to if you don't want to you know it's just a game type thing but for me I was like yes yes <laughs> <laughs> um and she was like, you sure? And I was like, yeah, where is the freaking address? Take me there now. <laughs> um, so I started auditioning for video games and um, I was just so happy because I think my voice, uh, people, I've always been super, everyone's always been really nice to me about my voice. They always said, that, oh, you know, you should read, you should read books for a living. You know, you're, oh, I, you know, you could read a book, I'd fall asleep and all these kind of nice comments about my voice. So I thought, oh, video games, this could actually, maybe this could work for me because I know I have a voice that I think is quite usable. I knew that that could make sense. Um, and I loved acting and I loved games. And I thought, oh, wow, maybe this could be, maybe this would be something that this is a niche for me that I, I know I could do well if I had the opportunity. Um, so I auditioned for a few games. I was, uh, may, I maybe had a, probably about three or four voice credits maybe before this, the Star Citizen audition came up. Um, I did the Star Citizen audition. I thought it went terribly. <laughs> it was one of those auditions. Oh, it was just one of those auditions that, I was in there and I, I don't think it was, I, I, sorry, by the way, to, I'm sure people in chat have heard this before. I've repeated this whole story and my, my story and probably to a few people in interviews. So I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but it was just, I think one of those days where everyone in the room had seen a lot of people for like, you know, hours and hours and hours. And I, I was probably number 46 or whatever. And they, I came in and they were just like, oh, stand there, you know, just get on with it type thing. It was just, they didn't seem like they were super tired. I think they must've been really tired on the day. Um, and that wasn't CIG, by the way. That's often, the, you know, the casting director. That's nothing to do really necessarily with CIG. That's just the people that were there that day. And I just did the audition. It was really, I just, the direction was a bit, it just went bad. It just went bad. It was kind of clumsy and rushed and awkward. And I had to like yell some stuff and run around. It was so awkward. I've never done such an awkward audition before. Um, I had to do the same monologue in an English accent and an American accent. And then I was out, gone. It was very, very quick. And I compartmentalized it as the worst experience ever. And I literally took that experience and I threw it in the bin. And I was like, I'm never going to think about that moment ever again. <laughs> and 
I left and I remember actually a friend called me and was like, oh, how'd it go? And I was like, we're not talking about that. We're never talking about that again. Fast forward to a couple of weeks and they, my agent was like, oh, they want to give you two parts. And I was like, what? I, I, I literally was like, no way. That was the, come on. But yeah, I didn't know the game. I didn't know. I've never heard it before. I was a console gamer. So this is the thing. I think I was a massive gamer, but I was on, I was a PlayStation fiend. And I think I always have been um, a console person and I sit and play story games, you know, on my, on my PlayStation. I'd never, never gamed on a PC before. I didn't know. So therefore any PC exclusives I would never have known about. So um, yeah, I did that. And it was my first, my first and only experience with full body mocap. Um, they took me to a different city where they had a studio there, stayed overnight in a hotel and the next day was about eight hours of uh mocap energy and uh that was my first time i did mocap for like eight hours straight it was really difficult but yeah that was how how it all happened i guess yeah awesome um don't talk so so i have to ask this question because jake is, is, is here anyways is are you a fan of the of the kingdom hearts series because i know that jake is a huge fan yes! of the Kingdom Hearts series so. i i love kingdom hearts so much See, it's actually probably the closest i've gotten to like anime in some in some way I uh, hadn't played anything like I Anna and I share the same favorite game ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, I don't, we I don't both... know if people would call it anime. I don't want to say the wrong word, but like that's the cl I typically no. hadn't played anything like that before. Anna, it. it's a hundred percent anime. It like is? Okay. not not even not even a question in my mind. Kingdom Hearts is an anime. Um, no, uh, me and Anna's favorite game is The Last of Us Part Two, <laughs> and uh, yes. I enjoy bringing this out for fans of this game because it is my pride and joy i'm watching the stream on my other pc <laughs> so if it's if my reaction is slightly delayed that's why if you look very closely at the inlay of this guitar have you is it engraved it's ellie's is it oh my god shut up did you buy <laughs> it like that or did you get it done like that no i they they did it so taylor sponsored um uh that game and they made they made a custom amount of of uh like ones that they made for the game they made like about two to three thousand real ones and uh i was like wow. yeah <laughs> that's mine <laughs> that's coming home <laughs> take it home um uh, it's my favorite that. thing in the world and it's I always right game. here next to I me I will also put Jake on blast because I know you 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 have a role in the most recent. Um, uh, oh gosh, what was the the most recent one? I'm blanking on the name of it. I'm so terrible because what? Uh, 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 forbidden. Oh, my last voice job. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Horizon. 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 Oh forever. yeah. Uh, so Jake is also a big fan of of Horizon the series. Yes. Uh, and so he purchased some. Um, like figures, like you know, uh, models, painting, you know, assembling, <laughs> painting. Um, he has yes. a stack of models that he has to paint for 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 this whole thing. He thought he was getting they like, made. Like... They made a Horizon Zero Dawn board game. Yeah, what? And they made incredibly detailed miniatures of every machine, every machine Who in did? Horizon. The, I, I I don't know. The, the the company is Sony. Sony? <laughs> yeah. um, wait, wait, wait! This is like a merch release. Yes, they they may, like. Here. No, it's too far away. It's too far. Right? Um, um, hey. it was a Kickstarter. And program. I know that you know. So so they did a Kickstarter for it, and I was like, I'm all in. And it was like for the biggest package, it was like a hundred and twenty dollars. And I was like, cool minis of the machines from Horizon. Yes, and I like board games. Um. Kind of a ten. Match, I guess. So you know, you know, like the like a board game box, pretty big. You know, like a, a standard board game box. Ten of them arrived at my door, and they all had like f these highly detailed machines. But now I have there's just stacks of Horizon Zero Dawn merch in the corner <laughs> of my house. Oh my god! And, yeah. Where is all this merch? If you've got a freaking Last of Us guitar plus that, <laughs> where is all oddly this enough. I actually don't have that much like video game merch. Those are just like the two craziest things <laughs> that I have. <laughs> I don't even have like I have one Kingdom Hearts t shirt. One. Oh, I don't just actually one? I don't actually have any Kingdom Hearts merch. Yeah. That's I haven't gone that far. I want a, I want a Keyblade, but if I'm gonna mm. buy a Keyblade, it's gonna be like I know people with Keyblades. 
I'm going to get it like forged. <laughs> anyway, <All right>. sorry. <laughs> that was my is, merch is, tangent. <laughs> um, so uh, one more, a little more thing for, for, for Anna just in this one. Um, you've, you've done, have you done mocap other than a star citizen before? Uh, facial, yes. Full body okay. mocap. Star Citizen was the first time. Okay. Was what, what is it like to, for the dots? Because I know it's like an. Is it <laughs> is it is it worse, better, or worse than makeup when when you have to go through for 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 makeup for say a, like a live action gig? I wasn't even really aware of the dots because it was. I think it was literally just like a pencil, like a, almost like mm. an eyeliner pencil. Some of them I know, like if it's super intense mocap, like I've seen behind the scenes for games that I love, like Beyond Two Souls and things like that. That's like you've literally got like these kind of little white tiny sticker balls all over yeah. your face, and that must be really, really, really like invasive on expressions and stuff. But this was more drawn on to me, so yeah, it wasn't actually that bad. I think it's actually probably it's on YouTube actually. There's a little bit of my mocap for Star Citizen. That's what was kind of kicked this whole thing off for the later questions. Yeah. But um, yeah, there was a little bit of footage of that on online somewhere where it was like drawn on, so it wasn't invasive at all actually. That's good. Yeah, I, I just I I have limited theater experience myself, and I know that spirit gum. I hate it. It's terrible. It stinks, and it it <laughs> yeah, gets nothing everywhere. was sticky as nothing was yeah. sticky or weird. That's good. All right, so let's uh, let's start off with the, the next question about like how did you get involved in the Star Citizen community and uh, another thing. Jake's kind of already kind of got. I kind of covered already. that. Yeah. Sorry. So, so Anna, <laughs> how did how did you go from just this is a job you're getting paid to do something to to suddenly you're you know a year streaming Star Citizen? I it all started with the streamer and content at Cobra TV. Um, I had done the job at that point and even just for my social media, I've always tried to get little snippets of the work that I've done so I can kind of keep my social media updated and be able to keep a kind of just a record of myself in the actual, in, in the kind of the end product. Cause obviously a lot of voice actors for games are not gamers at all. So they will do the job, finish the job and never see it again and not be even interested really, because it's just not their kind of industry for me. I can do, I could do a game and if I didn't follow it up, I would never see it. Um, and also I was, because I was a console gamer, I didn't have a gaming PC. I would never have seen anything to do with it unless I was like trawling YouTube and things like that. So I was literally, I just remember, I remember that I had to say the word new Babbage a lot or microtech a lot. So I was like Googling these words, just waiting one day for some kind of video to pop up or something. And board gamers video on YouTube was him exploring new Babbage for the first time. And he comes across my AI and he like speaks to me, asks me for a joke at the the hologram. <laughs> and I found it and he was like, oh my God, that's terrifying. It was just such a funny interaction. He asked me for a joke. I answered in this kind of robotic way and he went, oh, it's terrifying. And I clipped it and I put it on social media because it's just really funny. Um, that was the first time that I... I realized that this game kind of had a fan base because even that video itself had quite a lot of views of people just wandering around the area that I did the voice for. I contacted um, CIG because I was still working for them at this point doing extra stuff and they had sent me, sorry if this is long winded, they sent me a video of my motion capture um, along with a working progress of Dooley, uh, not for any other reason other than a reference for my voice. So like, Often for voice acting, if you have done a job that voice acting is super staggered, they pay you for how much that the game can afford at that time. And obviously money comes through to a game in, in stages. So I could do one character, but it could take two years because they all go, okay, we've got funds now to pay her to do this section and the game, et cetera. So I was doing my second installment of whatever I was doing for Star Citizen. And they sent me that video to remind me what my voice was like in that section so they just give you a reference point so you can match what you had previously done anyway so this video came through and I'd never seen myself animated and I'd never seen m myself in mocap before and I was nerding out so much because as you know I'm just a big game nerd anyway and I thought oh my god I would love to post this but a lot of game stuff is locked down and you can't post things like that um so I messaged them I was super cheeky and I said I don't suppose you would let me it's a, it was a 60 second video. I said, I don't suppose you would let me take that and post it on um, on Instagram or Twitter or something. I know that people would love to see this. And he was like, I don't know, but I'll check. I'll check. I didn't hear anything for like a month. And I thought, OK, not allowed to post it. That's fine. And then one day he sporadically came back. I think this was. Oh, who was it that I spoke to? Uh, David Hammond, maybe. I think it was him. He he went and checked for it with, with someone for me and they came back and they said, yeah, yeah, you can post it if you want. I was absolutely shocked that they let me. Um, but I posted it 
to be like, oh, you know, worked a little bit on Star Citizen, posted it on my socials. And within um, 24 hours, I woke up and 10,000 people had watched this video of me working uh, as a mocap artist on Star Citizen. And I couldn't believe how many people loved this game. I couldn't believe it. And by that point, I had a lot of messages and DMs were blowing up from people that love the game saying, you know, thank you for working on this game. We love it. It'd be so nice to see you play it one day. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And Cobra said, would you mind me interviewing you on my on my stream one day? Um, I, I know that they would love to hear your experience or whatever. And I was, I didn't know anything about it. I said, sure, sure, sure. Um, so I did the interview with Cobra. And to cut a more long story short, the fans, his his fans and his community and fans of the Star Citizen crowdfunded me a gaming PC so that I would stream the game. Um, within 10 minutes, they donated a thousand pounds. I couldn't believe it. I was I literally was bringing me to tears. I couldn't believe it. And uh, I streamed for the first time. My first ever stream on Twitch had about 500 people. I was playing the game for the first time. And Twitch, from that moment, from honestly, from the backbone of having a Star Citizen community, just kind of uh, just went from strength to strength. And within five months, I was able to quit my kind of rubbishy side jobs between acting and was making a living full time on Twitch. And uh, we've had 10,000 followers in one year. And now this is kind of my also my bread and butter job alongside voice acting and it's literally all because of posting a 60 second clip um that completely changed my whole life i couldn't believe it you've experienced the star citizen hug yeah it is a biggest hug ever cuddle <laughs> cuddle cuddle it was more like a star citizen holiday all expenses paid yeah <laughs> when when the star citizen community finds something they want to do they will they will um they will bear hug you and sometimes it'll bear hug you so hard you're just like i don't know why what what just happened i was i was i was in i was downtown and now i'm on the moon i don't know how this happened but it just happened so um that's awesome yeah i've i've i'd, I'd heard about it i didn't i didn't know that it was i knew that cobra had been involved but i didn't know that the community had, yeah. had crowdfunded that um yeah funny the funny story is that something similar happened to the lead community manager xylo actually had really yeah, Zylo had his his personal got got a personal gaming PC because he couldn't play his uh, play Star Citizen at home, so the community actually crowdfunded him a new gaming PC before he was uh, he was a community manager, and so he I completely forgot about that. Yeah, wow. I signed I signed it. I signed the inside of yeah. his uh, his uh, his really? PC. A lot of us a lot of us were able to sign it over to get it over. So it is extortionate generosity that I have never seen since in any community. I always say this, and it probably sounds really mushy and wanky, but I've just I've never seen. I think because it because this game is crowdfunded, it, it creates a community in a very different way than a AAA game or anything like that would in the typical sense of a big you know big production company, because it it has it has this feeling of the fans are the fans are keeping it going therefore the fans have every interest in making it a safe place and a happy place and a um a structured and well-meaning place um in a way that other games can't or don't have can't possibly have the same uh input if that makes sense so yeah it has yeah. been it's been beautiful and really really truly beautiful even if i i'm stuck in the game i don't know what i'm doing i still i'm <laughs> such a noob i've been playing it for a year but i still i still am learning every single time but they're so patient and loving and it's been amazing they are amazing the community awesome. truly makes my job extremely yeah. easy. Um, yeah. It's it's it, it's always a joy to talk to everybody in the community, and yeah. I miss in person events so badly because like it it like whenever even even when I was a backer and like I would um, just from like me going to like a job I didn't like or and like and I would get to a point where I would burn myself out um, as you burn yourself out on anything. And I would go to like a bar citizen or a citizen con and instantly just I'm uplifted. And like, I ha I've been like, I got new batteries <laughs> basically. I heard about bar citizen. I've heard yeah. about these. Yeah. They're coming they're, back. They're, they're pub citizens uh, in, in Australia. I think <laughs> they call them. Uh, oh, the, for some reason, for some reason in Australia they call them pub citizens, but in the U in the UK they still call them bar citizens. I don't know why they they do that. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. That's funny it because the UK is the home of pubs. Of pubs, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So for those of you who don't know, because they just actually announced this, is that a bar citizen was actually not has nothing to do with CIG. Sort of, mm -hmm. they sort of do their own. But these are all fan run events. 
where local fans will get together. Think of them as kind of like uh, hobby clubs or anything else like that, where people get together once a month, sometimes once a week, uh, and uh, go to a bar or a restaurant or just hang out. Uh, I've, I've been to bar citizens that are just at bowling alleys. So uh, just hang out and talk with other other people in person. Uh, and kind of started as a, a way that, because this is so an, such an online community, it's very difficult mm. for people to really see each other. Um, and so we started off as just kind of people who were online to come hang out in person if they're, 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 they're local. So people started meeting in these places and it turned into an old, its own kind of organization, <laughs> you know, where it's, they have. It became a phenomenon very yeah. quickly um, that like people were doing around the world. There was like there's been bar citizens in like Kuwait and Japan and like all over the world. Mm -hmm. Um and it, it's it's so so cool. And uh, if y'all read the letter from the chairman recently, uh, we're going to have a, a slew of official ones very very soon uh, next month. Um, so keep an eye out. We'll have details on that soon. Love that. Uh, all right, uh, let's, let's, a little bit more kind of around around the 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 topic rather than directly about Star Citizen, um, Jake. Yeah, you've talked about music recently. How mm. much has music played an influence in your own experience with, say, games or even just um, uh, your own your own life overall? Oh, I mean, one, it's, it's name. like I mean, <laughs> it's um, it's 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 the the only other hobby I have besides video games, for one, um, and it's it's like my my zen place. Like it's it's a very personal like um like thing that i do um but that being said um i was in two different rock bands in high school um and <laughs> um and uh i guess like like i love collaborating creatively with people um because there there's something about like having a bunch of people in the same room um who all have different ideas and experiences and talents and they all come in and their minds just sink all at once. Um, and it's an electricity that I have chased and will forever chase the rest of my life um, because there's really nothing like it. Um, and that's when when i was looking for jobs um i originally actually I, I went to college for music production um it just turns out that uh the the scene in boston was cutthroat and a little too crazy for me <laughs> um for for me to find something substantial so i i ended up um like i don't want to say i gave up on my dream but it wasn't like i i wasn't fully in it um in the first place um, but I've always wanted to capture like that collaborative creative environment uh, in whatever I do professionally, because and that's that's kind of what makes it fulfilling for me. Um, and there I have never had a job ever in my life that has felt like that until now. So uh, yes. it's. Aww. Jake. Uh, the, it, I, I am very uh, I the, it's a privilege to work here. Hundred percent. I'm getting emotional right now. <laughs> we're seeing. We're um, here to break Jake. That's the entire purpose. It's of this, true. Is to break it's Jake. true. Yeah. Done it. In an you hour. get me talking yeah. about the community. I will. I will cry all day. Oh. Uh, so Anna, I also know that you also are involved in music in your own uh, personal uh, as as well kind of stuff. <laughs> Hell yeah, she does. This is this is side that you know uh, I I follow in on on Twitter so every so often I just like see Anna Anna pop up with new music going like oh Anna sings okay so how has that has that played as uh, for those of you who don't know like uh, I also have minor in theater from for, for from college and so I I spent around a lot of a lot of time around creatives and one of the things that you learn about when you're trying to become an actor is that if you don't have incredible looks or skills or Anything else like that, no one will really care. To, to You have to have something that gets you, that grabs you out there. And so things like music are key. Uh, because if you, you I've, I've known people who've gotten acting gigs because they can play a piano. You know, they weren't necessarily the strongest actors, but they could play a piano and that 
played a huge role in their in their acting stuff like and stuff. So, Anna, has music ever, you know, what is music to you and has it ever kind of in fact impacted your your own career? It's never come into my job so much. I think my agent has tried, but <laughs> um, I don't, I, it sounds, you know, when people think that you're maybe good at something and then the other person is like being falsely modest and it's really annoying. It's genuinely not that I, I find music so personal. And I think when I write songs, I'm so comfortable able to like sit and record and in a, in a studio or put something on Spotify with my producer or something in a way that feels so kind of controlled and it's, to myself etc so I love doing I love I do love singing and I love writing and I love putting that out there in a way that is kind of like hiding behind a keyboard <laughs> but I have never ever sung live in my life I think I would really genuinely hate it not not even enjoy it not even just because I'm like too shy to I don't even think I would have fun and um I've never wanted to really I think acting acting I love doing that live mm -hmm. and I could do that at any time singing is super vulnerable and super scary to me and I think yeah it's never come into my job so much and I I'm happy to kind of yeah I just I just do it and it's definitely a side hobby that I love very much and I'm, I'm I've finished an album I've I was really lucky to have someone want to make an album with me that does produces music so there's a few songs on Spotify that I do and and stuff and it's all in a way that makes me feel happy and comfortable because it's all closed behind the studio door but yeah I'm definitely not going to be doing any international tours anytime soon, <laughs> I swear to you but yeah it's a it's more like a, a soft kind of quiet corner in my heart that I love doing kind of more privately I suppose but yeah yeah it's never come into my work so much no okay um so um well I, I'll ask Anna this as well can you can you can you join me in in a campaign to get uh CIG and this is this is this is all this whole this whole thing was to get Anna and me on here to get to, to attack Jake on this because uh I've been pushing for a long time to for CIG to support MIDI inputs for for, oh my for, God. for music for so you can play it in game play music instruments in game um at some point in the near, in the distant future i so. would love this wait 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 wait. what we're we campaigning for for jake to be playing music in game <laughs> well that too but for, for 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 the ability for players to play uh, use like midi controllers to play music in game for uh, oh that would be crazy let's do it yeah there we go cig please we can eat <laughs> Zylo's in chat Zylo, write that down uh, I, I write that down. You can you can play your 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 pin whistle for everybody. <laughs> so um, there we go. <laughs> Just added two years of development to the game. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I'm here for. For those of you who don't know, uh, I, I I I I personally claim I hold the record of delaying development for than any other, <laughs> more than any other person other than Chris Roberts. So um, uh, <laughs> at least once because I got half of CIG drunk at a at a, at a Citizen Con. So. <laughs> Uh, I bartended oh at a Citizen Con at a private event, and um, the next day we had a had a tour, and nobody was there except for a very hungover J J Jeremiah Lee, who was like, "Yeah, none of us really showed up because we were all just out late." And then I was at the tour. He looked directly at me. And it's like it's not my fault you drank. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, uh, all right. Um, let, let's let's think about talk about your experience. Um, Anna, your experience, you talked about your experience with Star Citizen thus far. Mm. Um, what is what is your experience as with Star Citizen as a game? Uh, just from, because you said you've been playing games since you were 13. And I know you said yeah. you, you're still kind of like new for it. What, what is, is there anything in it that, you know, grabs you outside of just, you know, you're part of the community and, you know, this, this is this whole thing. Uh, is there anything that she like, sits there and go, I really like this aspect. I really want to see more of this or I, like, I can't wait for this to come oh, out. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, coming to Twitch and coming to the game from a very different angle, coming coming from a non-PC game background mm -hmm. and also not from a non-sci-fi background. The only sci-fi games I'd ever played before was Mass Effect and Alien, alien Isolation, but I don't feel like that even counts as sci-fi because it's more of an alien horror. But like, main, yeah, I'd never really... I hadn't even watched Star Wars before I started streaming and then we started watching them as a community. They really were not happy that I hadn't watched Star Wars. Really <laughs> um, but I think coming from that background of normal, normally playing kind of more traditional story based and this being a, a kind of, I was actually talking to my mod and friend Gal the other day about whether, whether you would, he would describe Star Citizen as an MMO or not. And he was like, yes and no. Cause it is a bit of, it's, it's hard to kind of pinpoint what it is, but um 
I have I came to it from a very different perspective and I think I had to when people were watching me for the first few months they were like you're doing this all wrong <laughs> you're playing this wrong because I was more like I'm, I've always come from it from an explorative point of view I'm ne I'm never there to be the best pvp -er. I don't understand what on earth a server mesh is I don't know anything about online playing with anyone I don't understand things like that I'm more coming from it coming to it from a, just a love of games and a love of beautiful graphics and a love of immersion. And I, so I, I come at, I always come at it from a love of that. And the things that I've been really taken back by are just how expansive it is, how beautiful it is. It never, ever ceases to amaze me how gorgeous the thing looks. And I've played obviously games nonstop for, you know, over 10 years on, uh, you know, even on a PS5, it's just, it's, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. The game is beautiful and it, it, there never seems to be any boundaries or limits on what you can do in it. And that's why I love playing it. And that's why I play it every Tuesday. Um, and I always find, I almost kind of just find my own stuff to do in it. Really. I don't necessarily do all the kind of traditional things that are available. Like we just go, go somewhere and see something or create our own missions and stuff. And that's what is so nice about it. Cause you can do that. You can choose what you want to do. Um, which I love yeah so I have definitely come at it from I, I, I'm an explorer I'm an explorer and a viewer <laughs> I'm a voyeur uh, you, very you, entertaining for me uh, you you, I you, love said you it. talked about a lot like a lot of single stuff you did a lot of sandbox games like uh, like Skyrim and those yeah, sorts of yeah. things in the past so yeah okay. yeah less less of the medieval stuff more of the kind of I love modern day set games or future set games so that kind of help is helpful to to fit into Star Citizen that way because it it all feels extremely plausible as well. I haven't delved into the lore a huge amount, which is where you come in, <laughs> Mr. Astro. <Pub. laughs> but it all feels like I mean the, the the length of time it even takes for you to get out of your bed and then get to another moon, for example, that all feels extremely real time, and um, that it all adds to making it feel very real, which I love. It's not like you know there's no loading screens. It's not like it's not like you have to go stop for a minute, pause. Now we're here you you really feel like you are traveling somewhere in real time which makes that you know a death even that that much more awful when it happens or a, you know a 30k or something it's like no it took me you know six hours to get here um which is is amazing and amazing and, and it, i think experiences in the game feel all the more impactful for that i think from from your perspective yeah. of, as a story gamer, uh, what would you like to yeah. see more of in Star Citizen from that would attract if you think people people like from your experience in the background in terms of like you know more story games based what would what do you think would get more people from that sort of realm to try out Star Citizen? That's a really good question. I'd love there to be more people to talk to. It it feels almost like everyone's a mute running around, and the people that you can talk to are like the hologram or like occasionally shopkeepers and all your friends on the overcoms and stuff. But it would be so nice to have, I think, voices chitter chatter, actually hearing people having conversations, and I think having that element of humanity of feeling like that the, the the people are living, breathing people that walk around and they have they're going somewhere, um, rather than them feeling like NPCs just stood on chairs, you know. <laughs> which I do love. We love the bugs. But yeah, I being able to talk, I think, yeah, the, the human to human aspect of it would be really, really lovely to see. And I, I know that they are thinking of doing that. So I'm yeah. sure that will come. Uh, you're you're, you're, you're pre preaching my language. This is one of those things that for yeah. me as a uh, like a lore person is like uh, to make me feel like I'm in a city and not just watching a bunch of AI bounce into the wall. Um, yes. Th them talking yeah. about like, you know, the latest events or just how the smog is bad in Lorville or whatever. You're just them, them being human rather than yeah. just being, you know. Even if you walk into someone, just them being like, oi, you know, even just yeah. like, <laughs> where are you going? What are you doing? Ouch. Just something like yeah. that would, I think, make you feel more immersive, yeah. Jake. Hi. So, <laughs> if you can talk about this, this is the big one. Okay. Oh, boy. What would you Fine. like to see? in Star Citizen in the future? Stuff that's not currently in the game, but some things you'd like to see in, sure. in, the, in the near future. Um, I'm not gonna talk about things that uh, the community doesn't know about, but yeah. um, I think, uh, I agree with both of you for one, um, but uh, two, I wanna say, other than like all of our big, tech milestones and stuff because i feel like that unlocks everything for our designers but um i want to say uh the um i'm i'm actually looking forward to our dynamic events being truly dynamic 
Um, and uh, so like you're flying around in Star Citizen and uh, like you see all these like little skirmishes and things being generated by the by the game. And then Xenothreat just kind of or- organically happens like uh, like Xenothreat rolls up into Stanton and like we didn't tell you about it. We didn't schedule it. It's just going to be um, triggered by like the socioeconomic conditions of <laughs> the Stanton system and like the surrounding systems. Um, and that's all in the works. Um, and that's, that's going to be super cool. Um, and even like, um, like Xenothreat's obviously like very big, but even smaller scale ones, um, that are more localized and things that just kind of pop up. Um, it, it, uh, a lot of like random occurrence, um, helps Star Citizen feel alive. And we're, um, we're definitely starting to get there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's super exciting. For me and and it's it's cool because we're we're also building a library of all of these events as well so uh, it's going to start adding more variety for sure i look forward to an exasperated dually explaining how this is the 17th time they've attacked and they just stop please <laughs> we thought they were gone they're back again everyone <laughs> <laughs> how many times do we have to teach you this lesson old man um <laughs> That's true. That's true. How many times before someone before it's like, okay, Dooley, this is is this like an April Fool joke? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, uh, we we need those voice lines. Uh, <laughs> before Dooley just like, I know. Third time. I know. This week, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired too. <laughs> Um, so we'll wrap this up before we get into the question and answer session, but I got to ask these, 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 these questions. Is it true, Anna, that you, that you had to say Deluthermex like 17 times or 150 yes. times before, before <laughs> yes. getting it done? I, really I didn't want, know that. That's awesome. I wanted so badly for the stress to be dil- Deluthermex. It would have been mm-hmm. so much easier for me to say in an American accent. Um, like do, doing her accent is fine for X amount of time, but when you're doing when you're doing a, a very different accent for such a long time, it's at your mouth starts kind of slipping, and if you get tired, then with like keeping an accent consistent for for several several hours, which for this new Nine Tails event I did, I was there for eight hours. I was at a microphone for eight hours. My I was absolutely exhausted, and my mouth just stopped stopped trying to make American sounds. <laughs> and I wish that it was Diluthermex. It would have been so much easier, but it was Diluthermex. <laughs> <laughs> and oh yeah every now and again they they were so nice though they always have been so nice and very lenient and very collaborative with certain sentences if i thought something wasn't quite clear or i said could i change this word to this because it'd be easier for me to say they're very very accommodating so you know sometimes i would be like can we take out the word that and change it to this and would that make more sense is that okay and they were like yeah 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 you know so it was it was they are very accommodating yeah but dilutomex i hate that word <laughs> <laughs> there's another word for another Chem- thing box chemical <laughs> uh dilithmex uh, uh i can't remember the other ones uh zeta profline or something like that Z- zeta prolonide zeta- prolonide yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh lord that one yeah and because she- because she's so authoritative and she's coming from a place of you know hurry up hurry mm-hmm. up then you can't you can't just like you there's no there's no taking time over those words to make sure that it sounds okay i've always often you know if i said something and i was trying to pronounce it right the direct the, the direction for that line would be you know can we pick up the pace out make it a little, sound a little bit more urgent mm-hmm. so i'm having to make it sound urgent at the same time as not splashing the pronunciation in a different accent so <laughs> it's been really hard <laughs> out, out of all of the voice jobs that i've done Dooley is actually probably my most challenging one but it's the one that i've done the most of in my whole career which is funny but yeah Dooley, we do love her. We do. Does she love you back? No, but no, no. absolutely. No. She not. screams at me every time. <laughs> every time I'm I'm trying to slow boat stuff and things are going to explode. It's like Dooley, I'm getting shot at. Please, please, please calm down, Dooley. Please, we're just trying to do. But Dooley, I know you need more of this. I just I, saw. Um, I, I know I'm kind of. This is not a captain's uh, table question. It's just someone that asked in the chat, "Where did the y'all come from?" And it's funny because that was written into one random sentence. I and it was just one weapons free y'all. It was just one time, the mm-hmm. first time I ever did her voice lines once. And because it became such, it became, because it stuck out like a sore thumb, obviously to have it once, just yeah. once in the script. She's not from, te- no, she's not from the South. It doesn't, it's not, it's not descriptive anywhere that she's got like this kind of Southern American accent. So 
it, it stuck out like a sore thumb. Everyone knows about this line. Everyone refers to this line to me. Comes <laughs> to my chat for the first time, shouting "weapons free, y'all!" And I didn't realize that it was causing such an impact. So. I, I am, I am to blame because I heard it and I thought it was cool. So I clipped it, and, and it's now an Everyone. audio loop in my yeah. in my chat that people can play. I redeemed yeah. it several times. <laughs> But the, uh, the last time I was there it, with recording for Nine Tails, I said, um, I told them this when I was recording. I was like, everyone loves this line. Weapons free, y'all. Every, everyone loves it. Everyone, And they were like, what? Why? And I was like, because the y'all just came out of nowhere. And they were like, <laughs> yeah. well, maybe if they, I said, and I literally told them how much, how funny that everyone's finding it. And they were like, well, let's put more in. And I was like, are you sure? So uh, maybe at least you will see, you will hear it. I'm sure <gasps> maybe about another three or four times Leaks. we have. I was like, guys, I think we've got a y'all in here. And they said, Maybe. are you sure? Everyone checked amongst each other and we added it in. So th there's going to be at least four more y'alls in there to Beautiful. make it feel a bit more uniform. Incredible. But look out for the y'alls, okay? That's my um, little tip for you. Oh, one more thing before I, I, I hit Jake with the, uh, with, with the, the hard question. Um, oh, boy. Which is, have you actually read? There, there, this is the lore guy in me. There, Dooley has a, like extensive lore written about her now she's probably the most extensively written about um advocacy agent that we know about uh, she actually has a full interview that was done uh for for lore piece have you read that at all or has anyone directed you towards that me yeah i someone has sent me a little chunk of it yes i also saw the fake dating app thing did you see that yeah. yes. yes yes i've seen the fake dating app <laughs> so funny for a brief can, moment I thought, have they actually added this in <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes it's thing. often it's often my twitch chat or or my community that tell me about the star citizen updates mm -hmm. um because i i'm all over the place and sometimes i don't haven't you know haven't checked my email about something that's new or something so they go oh hey this is going on or this so when someone sends me a link i often just take that as gospel until i know that it's a joke and i was like oh my god they added a day that's really cool and immersive and then it was like a joke and i was it's very upset but uh, yeah uh jake i have to ask you I, a question when's ooh, when needed. when's when's squadron 42 coming out it's it's out <laughs> <laughs> Right now, right now. Um, I was, I was Imagine. expecting you. I was expecting you to say no dates. Uh, <laughs> oh, I could, I could do that, but that was yeah. more fun. <laughs> Im Imagine S Squadron Forty Two comes out because of my announcement on the captain's table. Like that's <laughs> that, that's how it it's just, it's it just, it just happens. Into the world. Yeah, it's two hours, y'all. Two hours <laughs> confirmed. The movie. The movie. Uh, <laughs> oh. All right. Well, that is going to be it for this section. So, because there was some confusion in some of the earlier captain's tables I've done uh, recently, where people are like, "Well, why doesn't Paul puts the question and answer session?" I do. It's usually directly after the, uh, the video, the captain's table directly after that on YouTube. But live, we kind of roll directly into it. So, I do want to thank Anna and Jake for spending some time with us. We're going to move into the question and answer session. Make sure that you're following Anna on Twitch. Uh, make sure you're um, being nice to Jake on Spectrum. Um, thank you. <laughs> and uh, if you enjoyed this, you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe for more content. You comments down below on your own your own thoughts and, and feelings. Uh, and like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black. <laughs>